It's the I Can't Mom Today podcast with Heather, the new mom, and Vera, the <clears throat> seasoned mom. I Can't Mom Today. Hey, this is Heather and Vera back again with another episode of I Can't Mom Today podcast. Hi, Vera. Hey, Heather. How are you? I'm hanging in there. How about you? Oh, girl. <laughs> Barely hanging in there. Barely. Barely. Yeah, yeah I'm, I have a, if you can't tell, I'm sick and um, getting no sleep and yeah. Yeah, it's okay. This shoot, this too shall pass, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's why when when things are going well, you need to enjoy it and take advantage of it. Yes, you can be you like know? this is what I miss when I'm feeling like bunghole. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> recall, like you felt good on this day, right? Mark your calendar when you feel good. <laughs> Give yourself a star. Yes. We are going to talk about something. I was I was watching TV a couple weeks ago and something came on where this mom lost her child that was like he was the youngest out of like six kids or something like that. So mm-hmm. they had experience with children, but mm-hmm. he was and they had taken him classes, swimming classes and all these other things that he was very very comfortable with being in water and around water. And so I wanted to talk about a little bit about water safety. But first, um, we're going to talk about another kind of safety for something that's coming up, which is July 4th. I mean, th- it's not the only day we have fireworks. Fireworks yeah, safety. Yeah, firework safety is important. So that's for either one. Well, I remember we used to have like little sparklers and stuff for my birthday, which is at the end of July. And so people don't just, of course, 4th of July is a big, big deal with all the fireworks. But a lot of people use them at other times, especially when it's warm outside and everybody's playing outside and doing stuff and um, and I actually found an article Parents Magazine did, and I did not know this. I mean, I figured everybody, it seems like common sense. Of course, you keep your kid away from fireworks and everything, but supposedly 30% of injuries from fireworks each year happen to kids. So that's one out of three. Jeez. And 20% of them are from sparklers. Mm-hmm. Like, I think sparklers that. would be like, yeah, but you're like, oh, but they're so little. But they're you? metal. I know. <laughs> It's Let me true. light this piece of metal on fire and see how it does. Well, that's what I look at it. I'm like, wow, that's what we used to do every year for my my birthday. We'd light up sparklers. But of course, it wasn't. It was just like me and my sister and my parents. So we were being pretty closely regulated. It wasn't like the whole the whole big birthday party of kids running around with sparklers. But still, that's scary, man. Mm-hmm. I when so according to parents, Parents Magazine. Uh, and the American Academy of Pediatrics, they say families with kids shouldn't buy fireworks for their own use at all. So don't do any backyard fireworks or any backyard sparkle, sparklers or anything that they should do all of it. Go to a show, go to reg, a regulated show, like something in your community where you know that it's, it's pro- professionally uh, being put together. The other thing that they say is if, if you do decide to do fireworks at home, it's to check with local fireworks laws because mm-hmm. they're a little bit different depending where everybody lives and some things are banned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and some of them won't have the safety labeling. They won't have the appropriate, well, safety measures applied to them if mm-hmm. they're like the illegal kind. Like they say, if it doesn't come in colorful packaging with safety labeling on it and it just looks like a weird generic thing or sold in a brown paper bag, that sounds really sketchy. Hey, mm-hmm. kid, you want the firework? You know, yeah. So be careful. uh, Be careful with that. If you do decide to do fireworks at home, and then they say, of course, never let your kids touch or light fireworks. I've been amazed actually at home parties where people will will let like kids light fireworks, and I'm like, really? You're letting your ten year old light fireworks? Like, does anybody else see anything wrong with this? (laughs) Meanwhile, I'm pulling my little little kid back. I feel like we did too, but we had like bottle rockets and stuff. Yeah, I still, well, they say you shouldn't do it at all. Mm -hmm. And they say you wouldn't let your kid play with a blowtorch. Why would you let them play with something like that? Because it's a sparkler. (laughs) That's a sparkler. Exactly. Like, you know, so, and this is actually a nice idea as far as creating a better, a more safe environment is find alternatives, like alternative fun things for them to wear, like glow sticks and glow bracelets and light up things that, you know, aren't a source of heat or flame. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, because you can like swing that little bracelet around in the air and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So that's always a good good idea. And there, there was all kinds of little light up things. You can get them cheap too, like the dollar store. And especially for really little ones, that's perfect. Just give them that. That way you know that they're not dealing with anything flammable. And then as far as if you go to a fireworks show, obviously there's, first of all, if you have a really little one, you need to explain. Some people worry about bringing their babies and damaging their ears. But according to, and I have an, a professional name behind it here, a doctor is on Frio. Um, he says that if you bring your kids to one fireworks show a year, you don't need to worry about their ears being damaged because some people get the noise canceling headphones and all that, which is fine if you think your kid's going to be scared. Maybe it's yeah. good to have it just in case, but it's not, you don't have to worry about damaging their hearing if you're just going to one firework show every year. Yeah. Um, but then the other thing is, is to make sure you stay within designated crowd areas, prep your kids that maybe that are a little bit older, but still little, but I've never been explain to them that it's going to be loud. So they don't, it doesn't startle them. Because again, some kids will get freaked out and scared. And also that noise. you can feel it too. Mm, that's true. Yes. So and that's, that's my favorite part. I could feel like the firework. Yeah. You like that? Or are you uh, being facetious? No, I like it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were like, yeah, that's what I love about fireworks. <laughs> no, I really do. I mean, I obviously the fireworks, but yeah. Yeah. Well, and then if you, if your kid gets too freaked out, according to this doctor is on Frio, that have a plan B. So if if the kid starts to freak out by the noise, maybe, like I said, do bring as a backup the, the noise canceling headphones or have an area where, you know, it might be a little quieter where you can, you know, bring them off to or, you know, give them headphones to listen to and watch something on a tablet or something so that you can distract them. Mm -hmm. um, but do have a plan B if you're it's a small child and you've never brought them to a fireworks show and again see i don't like big crowds so i don't really love big fire because between the noise and the crowds and the so i don't think i took luke to any of that stuff when he was really little because i would get nervous and then god forbid he got nervous then forget it then mm -hmm. both of us would just be one big fat anxiety attack so <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> which goes back to what we've talked about like know yourself know your kids know that don't don't force your kid if your kid doesn't like loud noises don't bring them to a fireworks show i know it seems obvious but we all get so excited about letting them experience fun things and then realize oh my kid hates this <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah or you can find somebody <laughs> relatively close that lives by a fireworks some fireworks display i mean there was one apartment i lived at here that I saw at one point, like four fireworks shows going off at the same time. Oh, cool. It was really, really cool. And you could I mean, see it, it all from your, from your, it was uh, really far away, but yeah, I could yeah. see it. I couldn't, I don't think I could hear it, but yeah, I could see them. Um, I was like, oh my gosh, this, this is so cool. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. So some of those things might seem to be a little bit obvious, but I could, I think too, um, the whole thing about, uh, the, the sparklers was one of the things that shocked me, <laughs> even though I guess, again, it seems obvious, yeah. but yeah, we used to play with sparklers all the time, but mm -hmm. a large percentage of kids get injured by sparklers because we all think, oh, it's just a little thing. It's just a little sparkly thing. So be careful with all of that. Yes, be careful with all of that. <laughs> that fire stuff. <laughs> that fire stuff. And then we go to water. We're like the well, fire and, and water and show. And also, <clears throat> excuse me, I am sick, guys. Um, also, something that I know from like, with the laws in Florida, you could go cross over the border and get illegal fireworks. Oh, in, in Georgia. Georgia, when we uh -huh. live, when I lived there, I remember a lot of my friends doing that. And in Florida, you can't have things that leave the ground. I think, <clears throat> like you can have the yeah. little spinny things or whatever, but you can't have anything that leaves the ground. Mm -hmm. In Georgia, it was different. So. You know, then we go get Roman candles and all kinds of craziness. Oh, yeah. No, I have friends who have done that, too. And again, if I've been at someone's house, especially even just for me, but when Luke was littler, I'd be like, okay, baby, we're going all the way back here. Mm -hmm. All those people like those things over there. And sure enough, I think every time I've ever been where someone lit off a bunch of fireworks at their house, somebody got hurt almost every mm -hmm. time. Luckily, not hospital hurt. But where they'd have like a pretty serious burn on their leg or mm -hmm. there's usually somebody who was a casualty, uh -huh. most, most of the time an adult, because at least they were smart enough just to make, let the adults 
do it, but still. <laughs> True. <laughs> it's scary. It's, it's, I always prefer to just stay far away and I can yes. watch from a distance. Yes, from a distance. Right? <laughs> And now to move on to water safety. The water. The water, which I love water. Oh my gosh, I'm a water Me too. Baby. Beach, pool. Yes. Not as much lakes, but yeah. No. Oh, 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 no. I, I really prefer pool, just pools. I like the look of the beaches, but pools are my jam. Yeah. <laughs> they, when It doesn't have creatures in it. That's my biggest draw. Yeah, I can understand. Well, lake creatures freak me out more than ocean creatures do. All so. creatures freak me out. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we so, got the gators in the lakes here, so yeah, pass. pass in the water. Yeah, pass, pass, pass. <laughs> so I was watching some show where this this family lost their son. That I think he was like four. He was, yeah, I think he was like four. He was very young, but he had been in swim lessons from the time he was like six months or something. Gosh, I wish I could find the story because it just really spoke to me because I was like, oh my God, this is something that could totally happen. Yeah. And he had his little swimmer things on or whatever, his little jump. I don't know what the heck they're called. Anyways, he had his safety gear on and he took it off for a minute to sit by his mom and she was talking to some friends and I guess he had decided to go into the pool with his with his brothers and sisters and all of a sudden she was like oh where is it where is he where is he and they they were looking everywhere and he was you know below water and he had you know, I mean, it took several days for them to pronounce him but it was just horrific he drowned yeah yeah, yeah and it's well, like something uh, drowning doesn't look like and so they they have this program and oh i want to i want to promote it and i'm going to do some more research on trying to find out who this is so we can put it in the show notes if we can because i just this uh, what they're doing is so important because what you see on tv for drowning is not what it looks like yeah, well, that's what they always say. Drowning is that can actually be quite qu- quiet because mm-hmm. uh, the person, if the person doesn't even have the opportunity to splash or scream or yell, yeah. they just literally go down to the bottom and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I have a story about, well, first of all, I've heard many stories about children drowning when there were tons of adults present. Yep. And um, not just because you always have in your head, uh, especially here in Florida, because a lot of people have pools, you have this vision in your head of the kid wandering outside and falling in the pool, Mm -hmm. whatever. But a lot of times these happen with the parents right there and other parents too. And you would assume that somebody's, you know, watching and I certainly don't want to judge because it's very easy because like you're saying it happens silently and and um suddenly and quickly um but uh this other story I heard it was about an adult drowning who was a paramedic oh, and he man. was at a party with a bunch of other paramedics and he uh he they were doing a contest just to see who could hold their their breath the longest yeah and everybody just thought, oh, he's, wow, he's holding his breath for a really long time. Dang. He, he drowned. Can I you imagine how those paramedics uh, felt? No. I mean, oh, we, they're paramedics. They're supposed to know this kind of stuff and be able mm-hmm. to, and they just couldn't, they were like, oh, why is he under there for so long? But again, perfectly, he wasn't splashing around or anything, you know, they would have noticed if he was doing anything like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So again, to be aware that it's silent, yes. that it can happen very quietly. And there's no, so it's good to have your kid in swim lessons, mm-hmm. but there is also, there are also lessons called survival swim lessons, swim mm-hmm. school, skills. Sorry, I can't speak. And that teaches them the skills necessary for if something happens like leg cramp or you start choking water, you get, get under, you're mm-hmm. in a tidal wave. Mm-hmm. There's, is that, is that right? Tidal wave? Undertow. Tidal wave. Undertow. <laughs> Whatever. Tidal waves too. No. <laughs> if you're in if you're in an undertow, which is a real possibility when you're near the beach. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then how do you survive through those? And granted, don't get me wrong, these are not even if you took those classes doesn't mean that it's a replacement for active supervision, which is the right. first tip on safekids.org on swim safety tips, um, active supervision. So having somebody constantly wa- watching the kids and maybe it's one parent that's, you know, or it depends on how many people obviously you get there, but have one or two parents monitoring the pool every 15 minutes. Okay. So th- these two take 15 minutes, those two take 15 minutes, those two take 15 minutes mm-hmm. and just really there are, 
parents that are not as neurotic as I would be. So I would probably right. just volunteer for the whole time. Right. Exactly. Me too. That's what I was saying to my <laughs> girlfriend the other day. I was like, I, I just always felt like nobody loves my kid as much as I do. So yeah. I'm going to watch it, <laughs> watch the best. But there've been a couple of times every once in a while where, where, you know, you literally just turn your head and then yeah. it's either, you know, somebody else's kid or whatever. Oh my God. So, you know, mm-hmm. Billy's, Billy slipped off or Billy's, you know, not coming up again quickly or whatever and you catch it. So I think it's always good to have several pairs of eyes so you're yeah. just watching. Everybody's Definitely. just watching because then you can get distracted and, and miss something because it can happen so quickly. For sure. And then whenever infants and toddlers are around the water, a parent or an adult should be within arm's reach of that child. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, usually when Luke was that little, I was in the pool with him or in the water mm-hmm. with him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have I a mean, swimmy thing for a baker, but it it's very weird because it it actually makes him go forward. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, like it flo- he floats, but it floats his face forward. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Hmm. So we have to that's constantly good. hold him. Not that like, oh, it's so annoying we have to constantly hold our child, but you know, he doesn't get a lot, a lot of freedom with that because we have to constantly, he's like a bobber that's a little off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I see, I think it's on that Safe Kids where it talks about like children can drown in as little as an inch of water. Yes. Scary. It is. Well, not only children, but people can too. Yeah. Because well, when yeah. you're, when you're, let's just talk about adult safety for a minute. When you're out <laughs> drinking. Yeah. <laughs> And you go swimming or whatever, or around the pool, you can, these things can also happen to you. True. Very true. Well, look at the paramedic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Scary. And they're saying start slow with babies. You can start at six months old for water safety. Every child is different. So enroll them in the, if one doesn't feel right for them, then that's okay. It's just, just like doctors, they aren't always the best fit for everybody. Oh Yeah. Make sure to only swim in designated areas, so not in like the roped off lake part that you shouldn't be swimming in. It's like all lily pads. Ugh. <laughs> Gross. Uh, talk and, about creatures. Yeah, creatures. <laughs> Whether you're swimming in a backyard pool or lake, teach children to swim with an adult. So kind of make it a habit. Yeah. So don't make it like, oh, well, here's your special time and you can go swim by yourself. Like make it a habit. No way, man. Always have an adult and don't rely on swimming aids because those things are aids. They're not. Lifesavers. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And and they're saying that you shouldn't like water wings and noodles are fun toys. They're really not even a safety device unless it's a U.S. Coast Guard approved personal flotation device. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I tell like my niece is here at the house and she's 11 and I always tell her, you can't, don't be out at the pool by yourself. And I tell Luke, same thing, even though Luke is 16, mm-hmm. even if he's just got a couple of friends or whatever. And I, of course, tell him not to horse around too much. Um, but it's just always good. I'm like, being by yourself in a pool can, can be dangerous mm-hmm. because something could happen real quick, even when you're a big kid. Yep. Yep. And parents need to be, need to be, prepared as well in the event that you know you you hope that something doesn't happen but if uh-huh. it does you have to be prepared so you need to learn cpr and what are those steps because cpr i know cpr just changed since i was certified 10 years ago yeah it they don't changed. have the mouth to mouth anymore from what i understand it's yeah um they they realize it's really better just to it's more important to keep your heart pumping mm, okay so yeah it's not untrue. I think they still have breaths in some sort. But again, don't I'm not certified any longer. I just know right. part of it. Because it's a baby ones. And make sure you know where local hospitals are. Yeah, just be prepared just in case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and be careful. Yeah, and take extra steps around pools, like with gates. And make sure you have lots of gates. And if you have an alarm that will go off if somebody's trying to get in so that you can hear that especially for other kids because some, you know, there might be a neighbor kid that's like, oh, I really want to, you know, I really wish I had a pool like Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> and then he goes and sneaks out and goes into your pool. Yeah. And he no, has no idea true. how to swim. So true. Yeah. Have to be safe. What do you know? And I don't have a pool, so I don't know about this. It says educate your children about the dangers of drain entanglement and entrapment and teach them ne- to never play or swim near drains or suction outlets. What's that? 
Oh, well, it depends on the pool. Some pools, like my pool, has uh, safety things on it mm -hmm. so that it can't, but the, like, especially like big public pools because they, you know, they're so big and they have to, you, you know, uh, circulate the water. So at the bottom of the pool, a lot of times it, it has, and I think now most places will have like a safety grate over it. Um, but in the past, there have been uh, children who have gotten, like, they would get, especially little ones, they would get, like, sucked up to the drain and get stuck to the drain or sucked into the drain because, like, a toy would go down there and they'd try and go get the toy. Um, but, again, I think most places have some sort of a safety thing on top of it, but it is something to be aware of. Like, if you see your kid trying to go for a toy or something that's by the, the drain at the bottom of the pool mm -hmm. um, to to be wary of that and tell them not to, not to get close to that and get somebody else, get somebody to just scoop out the toy with a scooper, a net or whatever, a scooper. scooper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to just be aware of that because that can be dangerous. And especially in public pools where, like I said, they're the big ginormous industrial size pools where they might have more suction to them. Mm, good to know. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. But they probably have lifeguards. Most of them. Yeah, no, that's true. That is a good part of most of those. They would have lifeguards, but still. It's like, but also there's a lot of kids out there, so <laughs> don't yeah, adjust exactly. on lifeguards. So, yeah, if your kid's, you know, trying to go down to the bottom to pick something up and, you know, the lifeguard might miss, might miss that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now I think about lifeguards, <laughs> like, you know, they're 16, 17 years old. Yeah. They're my son's age. I'm like, are they really that reliable? Hmm. They, I think they are. <laughs> I'm they, sure. usually, usually people that go into that are really, they're not looking for a tan, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. And maybe even get your kids involved with like the safety aspect. So, you know, if they see somebody that could potentially be in trouble or that isn't wearing their safety device and they mm -hmm. are supposed to be, because <laughs> there's only so much you can do with other parents. If a parent thinks that their kid is safe without the safety device, there, there's not a lot you can do. But if mm -hmm. like Luke saw Kyla and was like, oh, Kyla, you're supposed to be wearing flotation devices. I know you are. I've seen you with it. Where were they? You know, like check your friends. Like, yeah. hey, let's be safe. No, that's a good point, point, I think, too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So if you have any other advice, please hit us up at Facebook, I Can't Mom Today, or you can email us at I Can't Mom Today podcast at gmail.com or Instagram at I Can't Mom Today podcast. We'd love to hear your advice and what you do to get through the summer weather with pool safety and Fourth of July and fireworks, fireworks in general. Yeah, because we have uh, Memorial Day starts it out, then Fourth of July, then Labor Day. Yeah, yeah. So lots of fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> So give us your experiences and your, if you know this story that I'm talking to you about, tell me so I can link it because it's really cool. And it's not a cool story. It's a really cool program that came from this tragedy. Yep. Awesome. Thank you guys. Until next time. Bye. Bye.